Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Maureen said, my name is Manning Smith. I'm encouraged to be back here at Her Sinus. I love this event. Um, it's a great opportunity for you guys to discover um, your passion and put a word and label to some characteristics that maybe you have um, that you never realized before. So I want to start out with, by show of hands, have you heard of the word entrepreneur? Yeah, maybe you can think to yourself, like, what does it mean? Um, I've, I found the definition that I liked. Well, now it's working. There it goes. <laughs> An entrepreneur is someone who starts or owns a business, whether it's in farming, retail, manufacturing, or in the service sector. Entrepreneurs are business people who find their success by taking risks in their pursuits. They often become disruptors in established industries. So I want you to think about some questions here. Maybe, are you someone who likes to challenge the system? Maybe push things to their limits. Find ways to get an edge. Maybe break and then fix things. Maybe start something new or look to find the outcome of certain situations or maybe think big picture. These are just some things to maybe get, get the mind rolling. These are all examples of an entrepreneur. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I'm sitting here describing me, but that's not something that describes me. So I am confident by the end of my talk that you will be encouraged to think. And that's the real mentality of an entrepreneur, to think and take a chance. So Maureen said a little bit about me, but in 2019, I graduated high school and had no idea what I wanted to do. I was excited about photography, sports, video, statistics, and a bunch of other things, but I didn't really know how to put them together. So I really thought I was going to be a big shot working at ESPN, and that obviously hasn't worked out yet. Um, since I really liked photography, I thought I would continue doing that moving into college, so I found a school that would let me work alongside their football team and do photography for them, and I found Ursinus. So I, and then also at Ursinus, I found the scholarship. I originally applied just thinking it would be cool to get a little extra money, but little did I know that that scholarship is the reason I'm here today. So I worked in the U Imagine Center for four years, um, helped lead and run organi organize events just like this, and then I also worked with the football team as their media manager and sports photographer and a photographer at her sinus for four years. And I learned so much about what it means to be both a sports photographer and a photographer in general. But now I work as a statistical programmer at Merck, just over here in West Point, just a few minutes away. And I changed my major from media and communications to math and computer science. And thus I shifted my cor coursework to reflect my new interests. Now you're probably wondering why I'm standing here uh, giving you a presentation about entrepreneurship and I'm also still wondering that question. But hopefully we can convince both myself and you that entrepreneurship is everywhere. So just a little bit, oh, I got mixed up. All right, so I'm gonna just throw up some pictures of people and maybe shout out their names if you know who they are. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little help. Who's this, Oprah Winfrey? We got Shaq. These are people that maybe you don't think are entrepreneurs but really are. Michael Jordan. Oh, Michael Jordan, sorry, I said Shaq. Michael Jordan. <laughs> Um, Damon John on Shark Tank, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, does anybody know who this is? Sarah Blakely, she was the creator of Spanx clothing. Anybody know who this is? Probably not. Her name is Indra Nori, Noi, Noi, sorry, CEO of PepsiCo. She's the former CEO of PepsiCo. And then everybody knows who this guy is. Yeah, so you might think these are people that are associated with the world's best entrepreneurs. These people didn't pave the way of innovation by accident. They worked hard to innovate and develop. Just a quick quote from George Moore Jr. A winner is not just a loser. A, sorry, a winner is just a loser who tried one more time. And another quote from Thomas Edison, he said it best. I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. Entrepreneurship is the ability to turn failure into success. And it just takes a little bit of thinking taking a chance, failing, and approving upon your failures. So now, hopefully, you're a little bit inspired today. And after I'm done, um, you're going to be tasked with the innovation steps that Maureen discussed earlier. And I'm going to be kind of double, uh, uh, doubling up on what she said on the first two steps, being the problem and the solution. So now I'm going to jump into my innovation process, which is a little, it's about the same. Um, so... What we're thinking is step one is idea problem. Step two is solution. Then you're going to test and develop. You're going to fail and learn. And then you're going to repeat. 
Now, you're not going to work through some of these steps today, but this is kind of the big holistic process in general. Um, obviously, these steps take a lot of time. It takes many years for you to test a product, to develop, to fail, to learn, and to repeat. But these are kind of the overarching process that, that we're going to work through. But I want us to focus on being a problem and solution. Probably the two main things that you're going to struggle with today and that you need to focus on. But first, I want us to think about I, problems and solutions with thinking about the problem first. Now, everybody knows what this is. Maybe think about 10 years ago when AR headsets first came out. People were like, oh, these are like cool glasses thingies. Um, they don't really have a use, though, right? But even Apple Vision's Pro, it's a $3,500 product, and it really still doesn't have much of a use other than just being a screen. So Apple, now they're in a different situation. They're a multi-billion dollar company. They can kind of do whatever the heck they want. Um, but if someone else came up with this idea that costs $3,500, I could tell you they wouldn't go anywhere because they don't have a problem. They have a solution, but they have no problem to their solution. So that I just want you to think about you need to really think about the problem first because if you come up with a cool solution with no problem, it's not going to go anywhere. Now, like I said, Apple will make it work because they're going to develop their problem over the next three years and then they will be fine. They did that with the iPhone. When the iPhone first came out, they were like, oh, this is cool. And it didn't really have a, a problem because people already had phones that worked and then they kind of developed new problems. Now it has virtually become a computer. So it has found its problem. But we want to start with finding your problem first. So moving on, I just wanted to thank John. I took a few points from John. He's in our sinus alumni. This is pictured here with Maureen. Um, this was a few years ago. But I want to start with the same old question that everyone asks you all the time, Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner. <laughs> what are you going to do with your life, right? And the reality is you never really know the answer to that question. Um, what it means to, to, and if you do know the answer to that question, it means you probably really worked hard to make it happen, right? So you're probably sitting here today in two different buckets. I'm going to offer up these buckets. Oh, there's a cool picture. I'm going to offer up these buckets. You might be sitting here thinking you have an idea, but you have no idea where to start or how to do it. And the other bucket is you have no idea, and you have no idea where to start. So I'm going to focus on the second bucket because we can work with this, but I'm going to focus on the second bucket to help us figure out our ideas. So I'm going to work us through some steps here and, and then give some, some different uh, information to support these ideas. So first, when we're, when we're thinking about our problem, we got to start with the problem. Like I said, when we're thinking about our problem, these are some ways to help get the mind rolling. So first, think about your interests. Maybe list some activities, some topics that you're passionate about. Consider what you'll do in your free time. And then you can assess your skills. What skills do you have? What unique abilities that can you leverage to solve problems? And then determine your value and your motivation factors. Maybe list some activities, some passionate, and reflect on these core values. And then we'll move into exploring problems and opportunities. Think about frustrations or inefficiencies that you encounter in your everyday life. Consider how solving these problems can improve your life and the lives of others. And then talk to other people, collaboration, broaden your perspective, engage with, with people, learn their struggles and their problems. And then you can research the market. Look for gaps in the market where there's a crucial need that you can innovate in. And then we'll move into brainstorm and ideation. I love this term called brain dumping, where it's where you just throw everything out on the page, even small, even little, and you just brain dump. And then once you dump, you can combine and refine. I like that. You combine, refine. Kind of like the, the triangle with the blue sky and, the, and the, the space, blue sky and ground. You just dump everything out there, even if it's too blue sky or spaced, and then you can combine things together and you get something more grounded, or in our terms, we want something actually more, more blue sky. And then you can evaluate the feasibility, the impact of these ideas. And then you'll move on to validating the ideas. You'll seek feedback. You'll make sure that it's actually needed because, like I said, you could come up with a great solution or a great problem, but it's only a problem maybe for you and not like a million people. And then lastly, as we discussed in the first point, you want to align your idea with those passions and purposes that we discussed above. Figure out what excites you, what you can consider doing long term. These are just some ways that you can get the ball rolling to thinking about the problem. Now I'm going to jump into the solution. Now I'm going to go through some of the similar steps uh, that I just discussed for the problem with the solution, but I'll give a little bit different detail because you're tailoring it towards a solution. You need to first, once you once you uh, pick your problem, you need to then 
find and brainstorm your solutions. But before you do that, you need to understand your problem in depthly. You need to research your problem. You need to learn from firsthand experience and gain the insights, maybe doing surveys or observations. And then you can define clear, define clear goals and objectives. Specify your solution and what it needs to outline and clear, uh, outline clear and measurable objectives. Establish benchmarks for success in the solution. And then you can move on to ideation, concept, and development. Um, brainstorming sessions to generate solutions to the problems. Assess the feasibility, the scalability, and the impact of your solution. And then, as Maureen said that you'll do today, you're going to create a prototype. You need to create something tangible, something physical. Now, if your project is a rocket ship, maybe it's a 3D scalable model of your rocket ship. If your project's a website, then maybe having like a graphic of what your homepage would look like. Um, it could be anything just to relate a, um, a physical, tangible item of what your product is. And then last, you need to test and gather feedback. Like I said, collaboration. This is going to be a process throughout the entire um, about the entire innovation process. You can't do anything without talking and gathering feedback and then improving on what you hear. And also, don't forget to fail. It's not about that you have to fail, but you're going to fail. And so you just the real problem is, or the real uh, point is that you need to recover when you do fail. Refine and improve. Just like when you're building Legos and you break something, you need to build it back up. You need to make the necessary adjustments to your solution in order to continue to enhance your prototype and continue making new developments. And then lastly, you need to be the most valuable player. Actually, sorry, wrong acronym. You need to be the minimum viable product. You need to develop something and create a solution that includes the core features, the necessary to solving the problem. And then you need to launch your MVP. And this is what you're going to be working with today. You might come up with a solution to a problem, but it might have like five different components to it. You really need to focus on that minimum viable product, and then we need to run with it today. And then, and that's what you need to become rich and famous. But we'll get there. Nice and slow process. But I want to leave you with just a few key takeaways. And thank you for, for giving me the time. And I know I repeated some things, but I really hope that you can develop your problems today and then really get those solutions and then present to us. The, pa the path of entrepreneurship is filled with many challenges. And persistence and resilience are key. Now, keep your eyes on the goal. And when it gets tough, you just got to keep going. So here are just some few last points that I want you to think about. You need to embrace your curiosity and passion. Your unique ideas and interests and passions are powerful drivers. Embrace them. Curiosity will keep you asking the right questions. Passion will keep you motivated to find the answers. And then taking risks. Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs are risk takers. They step out of their comfort zone to explore new ideas and possibilities. But with risk comes failure. Resilience is crucial. Think big and innovate. Entrepreneurs are visionaries. They set big pictures. They think about the future and impact of their ideas. Be problem solvers. Entrepreneurs are so solution oriented. They identify problems and work diligently to find practical and effective solutions. Collaborate and network, just like you're doing today. You came here, you stepped out of your comfort zone, you're going to be collaborating and networking and working with like-minded individuals. You need to learn and adapt continuously. The entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey is dynamic. You need to stay adaptable and open to learning. The more you learn, the better equipped you'll be to navigate different challenges and seize opportunities. And then lastly, you need to maintain a strong worth ethic. Work hard, be dedicated, be the, that is the backbone of an entrepreneur. Be prepared to put in the effort and stay disciplined and be committed to your goals. Lastly, these are all characteristics that will not only help you today, but they'll help you your entire life. So I would not be here today without taking advantage of some of these entrepreneurial, sh entrepreneurial characteristics. And now circling back to why I'm here to speak today, I think the answer is it doesn't take someone special to highlight the importance of being an entrepreneur. It only takes someone that is passionate about innovation and working towards creating solutions that are better for the world and everyone else. Thank you again for being here today, and I wish you the best of luck in your entrepreneurship endeavors, and I look forward to seeing the amazing problems and solutions that you come up with. And remember, the future is yours to create. Go out there, take risks, innovate, and most importantly, have fun. Thank you. Check out some of the other content on our YouTube channel by clicking the videos on your screen now. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about what our center has to offer.